I want to talk about, I've just got a few minutes to go over this, is um, try, to answer, try to answer in depth a couple of questions that I get or, or even statements that I hear. Um, here, here they go. Um, are, have you always been like this? Um, how do I, what do I need to become to do this business? How do I get out of my own head? How come I'm not sure what to do? How come you seem to be confident in your actions? Um, how, come, how come the leaders, the top people in this company are happy and don't complain? How come they just force, how, how do they just work through problems? How do, they, how do they deal with the mental issues? How do they deal with the mental issues? How, do, how about this, young people? How do I deal with losing my friends that I've known? Or how do I deal with family that's trying to pull me down or a spouse or, or cousins or neighbors? How do I deal with all of this? Like, how do I become? And first of all, I was not like... I am now. None, none of us were. We all change based on, based on the people that we surround ourselves with, based on the books we read, and based on the stuff that we hear. So the audios, the reading, and the people. And there's a lot of other things that, that, that cause you to be who you're going to be. So I'm going to try to show you what I learned. And I actually started learning this as an engineer. My company would send me to seminars around the country, which I was so grateful for. I couldn't believe it, I was in shock. And it was funny because nobody else was signing up for these seminars and I was like, wait a minute, they're free, I'm going. And then I got involved with some other mentors in the, in the um, Brit Worldwide or Amway Corporation and they started pointing at books and they started talking about these things. And, and I started learning a specific, scientific, very straightforward, answer to these questions and I remember the first time reading it and hearing it from somebody almost crying going I wondered how it happened how these people are so powerful how they lead how they how they make decisions how I, I just I, I I was so excited to see it so if it helps one person I don't have any illusions that this is a magic pill and that first time hearing it, that you'll get it. But maybe some of you start to grasp it and you say, oh my goodness, if that's true, then I'm gonna do it. So here it is, the answer to those questions, in my opinion. It's called the five levels of personality. Like who you are, if you're confused, if other people are messing with you, how does that stop your personality? How does that stop what you do? How, how do people describe you when they look at you? So, the five levels of personality. Who are you? So, who are you now? Who do you want to be? We've heard, if you keep doing what you're doing, expecting different results, that's insanity. If, if people say, I don't want to change, I'm going like, I thought you said you wanted to change your position in life. So how can you change your position in life if you're not willing to change? And if you, if you, it's, it's, hard, it's very difficult to pick and choose. If you're in a fight and you're going, I won't use that weapon, I'll use this weapon, or I won't use this advantage, or I will use this advantage. When you're in the middle of a dog fight, I don't know about you, but I'm picking up everything I can to win. One of my favorite people in the world, somebody I consider a friend, if I text him, if I email him, he'll email me back, it's Brian Tracy. And you hear what he, see what he said, one of the most important characteristics of leaders, the most successful people in every area of life, in every area of life, is they know who they are, what they believe in, and what they stand for. Like they just got it. So if you think about this, in, in the who you want to be is a target. It's, it's, this is the person that will accomplish what you want to accomplish. 
And I, I love the way that several people describe it. Stephen Covey's incredible. Anthony Robbins incredible. Brian Tracy. This is Brian Tracy way of describing. He doesn't draw the target, but he describes the target. So this is me drawing what he describes. You see, the within is ceaselessly, ceaselessly becoming the without. So if you, if you haven't heard of this book, As a Man Thinketh, it's incredible. It, it, it's As a Man Thinketh, He Is. So the thinking starts out with the center of the target is the values. So the very of person, what, what you want to look at in the beginning is what do you care about? It, there's a smart aleck comment that I'm, I'm known for making smart aleck comments and it goes like this, seriously? Is that what you want to be known for? Because it's what do you want? Another way to look at it is, is that what you want to become famous for? Is, is that your spear in the ground? Is that what you've decided that you want everybody to know who you are? So you think about your values. What do you want? Like deep down, what makes you so happy? What fires you up beyond belief? I mean, and it's, I can't tell you that, but you have to start thinking about how do you want it to end? And that dash between the date you were born and the date you die, what do you want that dash to say? What do you want people talking about at your funeral? What do you want your kids and your grandkids to say? Yeah, guess what he did? And there's some crazy things they could say. I'll tell you, for me, I remember doing this thinking, God, what a country. I always grew up hearing that America was the land of the free and the home of opportunity. And I thought, why would I want to be broke in America? Why would I want a job? Why well, wanted freedom? I wanted to be I wanted to be married. I wanted to have a wife that would 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 run with me and fight with me and have babies. I just there was things I was thinking, this is what I value. This is what I want. This is what I believe in. I want to have friends. I never forget some of my dads when my dad was dying and his friends were dying and they were just talk about the times they had and just silly things they remember. And I always would just about cry listening to them, thinking about them reflecting back on their life. And so I was thinking, gosh, wonder how many memories I could create. Wonder how many people I could know. When I was little, I liked the Wolfpack, the NC State. And I was thinking, God, how do you get your name on a building? How do you get on a, how do you get on a, on a court? How do you get on the football field? I was just thinking that. And I was thinking, man, these army men, these military people, they're so important to me that they fight for freedom. I think I want to be a businessman and finance them with my taxes. <laughs> I don't think I want to get shot at. I like shooting at stuff that don't like to shoot back. Some people clearly chose differently for whatever reasons. When I was little, that was my value. That's what I was thinking. I wanted, here's a crazy one. What do you value? It's about you. How do you want it to look? I, I wanted to like my kids. I wanted my kids to like me. Because I know people that love each other, but they don't like each other. I want, it was important to me. So when I ranked it, 
when I ranked it, I, and I remember in my 20s just crying at these seminars thinking about freedom, 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 freedom. Because it was the number one thing I could think of. I knew I couldn't buy stuff like freedom, but I knew that I could, I knew that I could rent a plane. I knew I could buy plane tickets. I knew I could pay for tickets if I got tickets. I, I knew that money was a, a big strategy to, to use to leverage for freedom. Um, th this, is, this is the core, the number one thing that people don't do is what do you want? What's, what burns you? What is it when somebody says, You're, you, I can't believe you're going to miss Uncle Bernard's funeral. Your mom and daddy would be upset with you that you're going to miss Uncle Bernard's future. And I, I would think about things, I would be think about things that nobody could stop me. I was going to get free. We had a, um, um, one of our military husbands I see. So how do I say this? It's, it's, it's Katz's daughter, Sarah. Her husband got told to go. They didn't say, does this interrupt anything? Did somebody just die? He was told today that when he needed to go in to get approved or qualified for munitions or something like that to shoot guns, when he got approved, he needed to already be packed to go, not to go back home. And me and Adam reasoned that it will not be a comprehensive test. It will be more like the bullet comes out of this end. There'll be the check. Now get on the plane. And I'm thinking, and so Sarah was headed here. She wanted to see her husband before he takes off. So she's going back, not knowing whether he can even go say goodbye. So I wanted me to have a military mentality about my freedom. A guy named Bill Britt said it like this. If the dream is big enough, the facts don't matter. If the dream is the size of a pea, then a small problem will stop you. I, ha I wanted to create a massive dream so not only I could be free, I wanted my best friends to be free. I wanted them to travel the world. I wanted to create experiences all over the world with them. Basketball, football games, all over the country. Ireland, New Zealand, Hawaii, Tokyo, Thailand, everywhere. I wanted everybody, I was just crazy and you go like, you could not have thought about that. We've got kids in here, 18 years old, 19 years old. Where are you? 21 years old. Are y'all out there? The 22-year-olds? You, you are in 23 and 26. I was doing it when I was 27. And, and so I'm 40. I don't care when you hear it, when you get the chance to start thinking about this and saying, that's going to be my mentality. Because whatever goes in the core what uh, one of my preachers said, he, what, he said, what goes down in the well comes up in the bucket. You see, whatever you value is going to turn into what you believe. Andy Andrews calls it perspective. If this is what you value, then this is what you believe. That you believe you're a good, if you value being a good person, then you're gonna believe that there's other people out there that are, that are good people. If you think you're gonna be free, if you value being free, you start thinking you're gonna get free. Your values determine the beliefs you have about yourself and the world around you. I think there's a lot of people out there that believe America is the greatest country on earth. I believe there's a lot of people to believe it's the most free country in the world where anybody has an opportunity. I don't care how awesome your dead gum accent is, it's an unbelievable opportunity. I've started believing that a country boy 
from Union Ridge, North Carolina could get some of this stuff even if he didn't have that blue blood degree. If he went to NC State, it didn't matter. That's where my belief was based on my value. How strong I believed in freedom turned into my belief. My belief turned into my expectations. So I expected people to get mad at me when I did something that they didn't think was right and I expected to do it anyway. I expected friends to come along with me and ignore what other people told them. I expected to change friends over time as I had, I had certain friends in a season and then I would keep going forward. I just, because I knew it was freedom, I wouldn't let my best friend who roomed with me at NC State and he wanted to be more than anything I've ever seen anybody to be in an emergency helicopter saving them people. And I was like, that's a great dream. That's not my dream. He does that today. I do this today. We don't, I don't ride on helicopters with him. He don't come to conventions. If I call him up, he's going to say, how you been? I'm going to say, great. And that's pretty much where we're going to end. I might ask him, how's his kids? I don't know how the old they are. They got to be grown now. He's going to ask me, how am I? And he's going to ask him if he's been fishing. And that's where it about ends. We love fishing together. We love talking together. But my expectations were that I would find somebody else that believed in big time freedom. I expected to find those people. The, the values goes to the beliefs and then you expect. The fourth level of who I wanted to become, who you become, a lot of our leaders have already become, is attitude. If you want freedom, you believe freedom, and you have an expectation of freedom, then you have this almost, some people don't understand it, attitude. The worst things happens, and you're like, and people are going like, what's going on with the stock market? And you say, opportunity, baby. Somebody don't show up. Somebody quits and you go, whoa, somebody's stepping up. Because you see, your expectations are what your beliefs are, what your, what your core value is, which determines ultimately your attitude. And your attitude becomes everything's working just like God wants it to. And I'm excited and happy that it's working like that. I'm getting cold chills. Not the other. Why me? I'm thinking, yes, and I'm here. I'm here when artificial intelligence is coming out. There's nobody needs artificial intelligence more than me. <laughs> I'm like, this is good. This is good. Your attitude of goodness, your attitude of gratitude, attitude of thankfulness, attitude of, how's this good? That's got to be good. Ooh, I don't see it, but I know it's good. They changed the tax code. I know there's a loophole in here somewhere. I am telling you, I am telling you, I know it's here. We got to find it. My attorneys, my accountants, they laugh. As I love, I'm, my, my attorney, he called me this one. He said, you're the insurance premium whisperer. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just ducking and dodging, and I keep moving. And he's like, I'm watching. I see you. Paid off my house this month. Can I get an IUL from you? I said, this is what I'm talking about, brother. Robbie Kraft, write him up. 
You can take 10% and I'll take 90. Woo! <laughs> Your attitude is everything. That's why you see people with great attitudes successful. That's why you see people with bad act attitudes fail. Their attitude is not lined up with their beliefs and their expectations and their values. They're not lined up. They're messed up is what they are. It's not what happens to you. It's how you respond to what happens to you. And if you've set your core values up that if the world's on fire, you stick to your values because that's who you are. And you, and you get to decide that inner, inner circle. And each step after that inner circle is based on that one. I almost... Like, as I was preparing this and reading and studying and talking to people and asking some questions, I almost want to apologize how I just say, like Nike says, just do it. It's easy as everything to just do it if your values are in place for what you really, really want. The actions on the outside will ultimately be the reflection of your innermost, inner, 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 innermost values, beliefs, and expectations. So it's not, it's not the superficial values. I want freedom. Because we're going to judge you, the people that understand how the five levels of personality, we know, we know this. When the actions don't line up with the words coming out of your mouth, the actions are lining up with the core of who you are. So when I say all you got to do is start getting $500 worth of leads a week, all you have to do is call the people. I almost want to apologize for how many times I've said that by not starting out with, have you decided? Somebody, somebody, somebody crank it out. Have you decided to follow Jesus? Have you decided? It's, it's, that's what I'm talking about right there. Can I get a fax? If... Your, your actions are going to line up exactly to what you really believe in. So what you've set, what you've took time to draw out and think about, reflect on, who was it said, a man's life without reflection is worthless. It's reflect back and think what you really want. Now what happens is you do. You see, there, there's no arguing with mama. There's no arguing with wifey. There's no arguing with the husband. And, and I'm always like, when somebody tells me about what their wife said, their mama said, I'm always like, I understand. Here, you think what I'm saying is, I understand giving up and giving in. You think I understand and I agree with you. What I'm saying is, I understand that what's in the in, 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 inside of you is not what you're saying is on the inside of you because your actions are reflecting something not like that. You want to tell me on this, you want to, you want to, You want to see a miserable person, okay? Poor mouthing, gossip mongering, come in late, skip meetings. I, 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 you can't go in their heart 
but you can certainly be a fruit inspector. You can't judge people, but you can tell if it's an apple or orange or a watermelon. And we know what's inside of apple, we know what's inside of orange, and we know what's inside of watermelon based on what's on the outside. Don't judge a book by the cover. We judging watermelons, brother, not books. The fruit inspector, not a book inspector. We know what's in the inside based on what we see on the outside. And when you say you can't get out of your own head, when you say, I don't think I'm worthy, when you say, I'm trying to decide, I'm trying to understand, I would beg you to go back to that inner, inner value and decide once and for all, what's your game plan? When you get, if your goal is, is to make more than your daddy, your mama, your mama, daddy, and your in-laws combined, and that's your goal, when you hit that goal, your actions will become so different than where they were when you were getting to that goal. No more than an airplane taking off, spending gas like crazy. But once it gets at the desired altitude, the gas keep, quits getting spent and it coasts. It's a whole different game once it gets to where it wants to. So when you see a guy go on to become legendary, when you see a Hall of Famer, that tells you what was in their side was not ever stopping. I got a little mad at Jane the first time she said she was stopping the rumor of me retiring. Because I told her, I said, you know, you're starting the rumor. There was some people who never thought of that. You just, and I was like, no, that's kind of funny. So I gave up on the entertainment value of it and she didn't like it when I got mad at her. So I decided to, to make it an entertainment for me that I thought it was hilarious. I have zero intentions of stopping. I do have intentions of taking crazier trips around the world. It might be five, six weeks on a private jet What's that? Um, what's what's um, National Geographic around the world? National Geographic, six weeks, eight weeks on a private jet. Yes, I will WhatsApp you and message you from there <laughs> when she's not looking. Because Mark Aceta said that I should be in present, so I will sneak out back when I'm not present, and I'll be present when I'm present. But I want to keep going. I want to impress Brian Adams. I want to impress Steve Young. I want to impress, there's a whole list of people. I, when I came out on stage, I was like, man, wouldn't it be cool hanging out here with Dave Chappelle? You know, wouldn't that be cool just to sit down with him, smoke a cigarette and have a cup of coffee? I mean, I don't smoke a cigarette, but to hang out with Chappelle, I'd smoke a cigarette. I done made my mind up. I'm in, Dave. I ain't gonna do it the level I'm at. I gotta get bigger. I gotta find, I gotta get, I gotta get somebody to my level. That's why I put out those five legs. And that ain't all of them, but I need somebody to have five legs like that. It would be cool if three people had five legs like that. What I'm talking about. That becomes legendary. That's, I'm fighting, guys. How do you keep on track? I love this. I remember reading this when I had a job. Why am I on payroll? <laughs> what do they pay me for? Let me be crystal clear. I know all the accountants, all the bean counters at Integrity. I know what I'm on the payroll for. Do you know what you're on the payroll for? They call it premium and EBITDA. Now, to be clear, we're going to be in Germany in two weeks with Brian Adams. And Jane was like, I can't wait to get Brandon Manley around Brian Adams because Brandon has no idea how much fun Brian Adams is. I'm going to tell you something. It is crystal clear that 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 integrity, Eric Peterson, 
Every single one of them love to have fun. And every single one of them understand what premium and EBITDA is. What are you on payroll for? What is your job? What is your job with your spouse? What are you on payroll for? What do you produce? What effect do you bring to the table? If you know that, if you know that, then you irked to know what to do. What's the thing that makes them the happiest? What's the main thing that makes her the happiest? What's the thing that puts the bacon on the plate? What's the highest value? What's the key result? More width, more spread. More depth, more stability. What's the key result areas? If this happened, would this be unbelievable? All right, one example, maybe two. It would be incredible if I could save $150 on my plane flight. I'm going to shop. It would be incredible if I could have, find another Marcus Richardson five in depth by making a phone call and start screaming at him that he needs to be two days from then to meet you five hours away when the man ain't got no money whatsoever. Both of those things take a minute. Which one is a key result? If I've told my kids one thing time, I've told them a thousand. Nobody understands how hard I will fight for that one more young Brandon. There's another Brandon out there I'm going to talk about. There's another Brandy on I'm talking about. There, there's another, there's another, there's so many young people that I think are sharp. I hope they got the heart, but they know how hard I fought to get them here. And sometimes they know how much I paid, how much I spent. How if I flew people to see them, paid for, paid for somebody else to fly out there to see them. What are the key results? For me, for me, one of the key results is how many people I can get here. And if you're taking direction from me, then I'm telling you, there's an event coming up in 90 days that's going to mess you up called family reunion. Key results in what you do. This, this one's hard to, for most people to grasp. What can I and only I do that if done well will make the real difference in my company? What is it that I can do that nobody else can do that if I do it right, it's going to kill it? What's that one thing that nobody can do but you? Touch them, hug them. Somebody else hugging them ain't going to be the same thing. Somebody else looking at them and saying, I see it in you is not the same thing as you doing it on a Zoom call and that flat screen. People just like dogs. They don't do much for TV screens, baby. Them dogs see you step at them and they go to growling, wagging that towel. It's a whole difference when you're in person. They sense it, they smell it, they feel it. You gotta be there, traveling, getting out of your house, getting them into your house. Nobody else can be that person as much as you can be that person. And then there's now. What are you going to do right now? Right now, if I'm you, if I'm me, I'm getting right back in my seat and I'm going to be absorbing this character, absorbing every feeling that I can get. I'm going to try not to be thinking about who I'm going to meet with afterwards. But there is somebody I want to meet with at 8 o'clock in the morning. i got to get that text to them sometime. But it can't be right now because I left my phone down there on purpose. Or else I would want to do it right now. Because it's really important I meet with them at 8 o'clock. You understand what I'm saying is, what is it right now that makes all the difference in the world? So this is clearly... If you've read the book, Brian Tracy up one side and down another. Brian Tracy's coin of success. What do you really, really, really want? What's the deepest desires that you have? 
Do you want to hear, well, d- well done, well done, son? Is that, what, is, that, is that big deal to you? Or is that a cool saying that you heard from some preacher one day? Goals give you that sense of meaning and purpose, a clear sense of direction as you move forward. Your goals make you feel happier and stronger. You feel more energized, more effective, more competent, confident in yourself and your attitudes because it's those values. That's why I have those coins and I've always got them in my pockets. And I'm saying, listen, it's not complicated, but I just did five levels of personality. So it is complicated, but not when you simplify it down to what do you want? Simple, clear goals. Every step you take toward your goals increases your belief. You can set and achieve bigger goals in the future. And then how do I get it? You know how you get it. Your beliefs, your attitudes, and then your actions. And then out of your actions, the highest value actions. That's why the coin is so killer. It's just so Simple. Now, I kind of apologized for it in the beginning because I said, oh, this is what you want. How do you get it? When in fact, it's this psychological thing that starts with you really thinking about what you want. The rest of this weekend, think about what you'll die for. Think about what you'll fight for. Think about what your haters will go through, legal problems. What are you willing to do and how much are you willing to go through based on what you really want? You are the president of your own career and your own life, the architect of your destiny. You are free to make decisions. You the one in charge. Wherever you are in life, right now you've been making decisions. 90 days, six months, a year from now, we're gonna be at another one of these. And you will have as many people on your team at that meeting based on your core values. You, whatever, because that's what's going to turn into your attitude. When a person says they can't make it, they won't make it, they ain't going to go. And then within three minutes, you turn them around and they got their hand on a Bible swearing that they're going to be there and a credit card in the other hand to pay for it. That's because they saw a man or woman who was determined to find another man or a woman who would do whatever it take. No matter how short of a notice it was, they figured they would do it. And you're sitting there going, I found me one. And then your beliefs go through the roof. And sometimes their mama tells them they can't do it. And you think to yourself, woohoo! got him out of the way. Now I'm going to find the next good one. Because you got that attitude of he was in your life for a reason. And then sometimes they make it and they hang on and they show you your paycheck and they show you what they're doing for their family and they show you a new house and you go like, yeah. By the way, your job is to find another one. You don't even hesitate. You celebrate. You want to party but you know it's time to move on. You can get them. It's just a reminder. I, you can't get them tonight. They're not going to tell them not to open the store. You can order them online at shopthealliance.com. I keep them with me. It's just a reminder. It's a tool that I use. I love showing them to young people at NC State when I go for the fireside chats. No matter what kind of business it is, no matter what kind of industry, I don't expect them to. I I want everybody to get an insurance, but I don't expect them to. You know why? Because I need somebody to fly the plane. I need somebody to wash the cars. I need somebody to drill them, fill them, and bill them. I need a dentist not thinking about getting an IU out of me. I want him to get the cavity. You understand what I'm saying? I let other people do their job because I'm going to do my job or I'm gonna die trying and I really don't even care because it's freedom either way, baby. I got this thing. Love y'all, thank you.